Trail Hunt for Food card game. In this game, we're going to show you how to play the game. The Oregon Trail Hunt for Food card game is a little bit different from the original Oregon Trail game. You can play these together or you can play either of them separately as standalone games. If you decide that you want to play the games together, I recommend that you play each of the games by themselves so you kind of get the hang of it before you combine the two of them together. But if you were to play the two of them together, you would start off by playing the Oregon Trail game and then at any point, like the video game, you could go off and hunt for food. That's what I'm going to show you how to play is this version of the game. If you'd like to learn how to play any of the other versions, feel free to watch my other videos that I have in the playlist on how to play this game. So we are set up. We're going to show you how to play this game. I'm not going to do a full game. I'm just going to show you a few of the things. So your starting player was the player who has seen the squirrel last can choose any of the outer edges of the game to place their starting piece. So I'm going to go ahead and just place it here. Then the starting player would take one of the die. So each player has a die. I'm going to roll. So this case we have a four. Now the way a four works is that the hunter, the person who is moving the hunter, has four actions that they can take and each of those actions they can do different things. They can hunt. If there was an animal turned over they would be able to hunt. They would be able to move the hunter. One space counts as one action. So if I wanted to do all four I'd one, two, three, four. Or I could go one, two, three, four. And you can't ever move diagonally. It's always horizontal or vertically. The other action that the hunter can take is they can turn over a card to reveal what's under it. Maybe it'll be an animal to hunt. It could be an abandoned wagon where they get a supply. It could be something not so great like an obstacle that they have to go around or it could be a calamity card. So if he was to turn over a top card, the way that you determine what cards he can turn over and reveal is by the number of they rolled on their die. So he rolled a four, they can turn over this card or any of the cards this direction because there's only three and this one's two away from the hunter and then one, two, three, four can go all the way up to here, can turn over any of these cards. One card is one action. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to turn over for our first action, we're going to turn over this card. So this is an abandoned wagon. The way that an abandoned wagon works is you have these supply cards that were dealt to you at the beginning. You start off with four. The four supply cards are for your entire group to use. If you are using them to rid a calamity, the other players that are playing other than the one who has the calamity would vote on whether to use one of these cards to help to aid the person who has the calamity. So the abandoned wagon I'm not going to use right now because I'm not sure what supply card I want to pick and I would get to choose one from the deck to add to our four that we have here. So I'm going to hold off on that one. So that was my turn one. So turn two is a broken leg. Well, in this case, a crutch. It says one crutch can cure you if any player draws a, another broken leg before you are cured your wagon train members leave you for dead. Because I rolled a four and that was my second turn, I got a calamity card. My turn is now over. I place this card in front of me and then it goes on to the next player's turn. So player two would roll, they roll a three. Because we don't have a crutch over here, player two has decided to move to the abandoned wagon to gain the supply. So they would come here, they would pick out the crutch, they could use that to rid the calamity. It would be removed from the game. So once you take a supply card, this wagon now is an obstacle and you can't move through it. Now had I not taken a supply card, I could have passed through it and come back to it and it would have just been like a piece in the trail. But once I take the supply card, it's now an obstacle. Let's go ahead and turn over. Yeeks, there's another obstacle, a tree. Okay, so we've done our first move and our second move. The third move, I'm going to look right here and see what we get. That's a blank. All right, so now the next player rolled a four. So we're going to move here. Let's go ahead as our second turn. There, we're going to turn over that card and it's a rabbit. 
So we rolled in that four and our first turn was to move here and our second turn was turn over this. Now ideally the hunter would like to shoot this rabbit but this spot is not cleared yet. So either the hunter can move here and then shoot or they can turn over this card or they can wait. I am feeling like we're getting locked in a little bit so I'm going to go ahead and move because if there's an obstacle here it gets hard to get out. So I'm going to go ahead and move for my second turn and for my third turn I'm going to go ahead and shoot at the rabbit. In order to shoot at the rabbit's 100 bullets. We both have to roll a three or four in order to get it. Neither of us got a three or four. So this rabbit, because my turn is over, it got away. We scared it away. So then the next player goes ahead and rolls. We have a four. We're going to get out of this little cramped area. Um, before we do, I'm going to turn over this bottom card. Oh, a broken leg again. All right, this player's turn is now over. Good thing we had remedied the last broken leg. So another four. Boy, I'm rolling lots of fours today. Usually I roll one. So move one, move two, move three, and we're going to take a look what's here. Ah, four, a squirrel. I haven't shot at it so I can, it's not scared away yet. All right, next player. A one. We're going to go ahead and take a look at this card. It's a blank. All right, next player, a two. So we're gonna go ahead, we got two shots. We're gonna try to shoot at this squirrel and see if we can get it. So it's gonna cost 100 bullets for the first turn. We have to have a three or a four. This die rolled a four. And for another 100 bullets in our second turn, we can try again. And we got a four. So the 100 pounds, that we're able to carry back to our wagon goes up by our supplies and is added to it. And so the game continues until you've had an opportunity to get 600 pounds of food or everybody in your party has died. If you're playing the Oregon Trail original game, the green box, then at any point you could say, okay, we've collected our food and we are going to go back to our original game. We'll take our food and our supplies with us. One other thing that I don't believe I, I shared was if it was my turn, say I rolled and I rolled a three and I decided to move here and then I decided to move on to like another square, this blank one would be removed from the game and then you would be able to continue if you wanted to. That's the basic rules on how to play the game. It's pretty simple. You can't go around obstacles. You can go through a wagon as long as you haven't collected a supply. Hunting requires bullets and you have to roll the proper amount and all players have to roll. If one player rolls the right number and the other one didn't and you pay another bullet, any of those players can roll the next die again and try again. Hope you enjoyed learning about how to play this game. Feel free to watch any of my other videos from Oregon Trail. 